Later today, the House Rules Committee will hold a hearing on Peter Navarro and Dan Scavino. This comes after the January 6th panel voted to hold both former Trump aides in contempt of Congress for failing to comply with its investigation, like Trump and other top advisors to the former president. Navarro and Scavino have claimed they're protected by executive privilege. For more on today's hearing, let's bring in CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. Uh, Robert, it's good to see you, my friend. So we've seen the House Rules Committee hold similar hearings. What's significant about this one? Good morning. We have seen the House committee in recent months hold these kind of contempt hearings and push them to votes on the House floor as they try to nudge and, and in fact, push some of these Trump allies to cooperate with the committee. It began months ago with Steve Bannon and former chief of staff Mark Meadows. Now it's these other Trump loyalists and former aides, Dan Scavino and Peter Navarro. They want to bring this legislation through the Rules Committee. It's expected to get through the Rules Committee so it could then get to the floor of the House of Representatives representatives for a full chamber vote holding these two particular officials in contempt of Congress. So as we know, uh, lawmakers can vote as much as they want, as many times as they want, but it's the Justice Department that really makes the final decision on something like this. And the Justice Department has been, you know, facing mounting pressure from Democrats to, you know, go after some of the former president's aides, to go after the former president, in fact. Um, how, is the, uh, how is the Attorney General, Merrick Garland, responding to all of this? Among House Democrats who are close to the committee, there is growing frustration with the Department of Justice. There's a sense that the Department of Justice, from the House view, is pursuing sedition charges, which they applaud, in terms of the people who are on the ground committing uh, alleged acts of violence or participating in any sort of planning of the January 6th attack. At the same time, House Democrats would like to see more focus from the DOJ on an alleged conspiracy, uh, legally and politically speaking, driven by then-President Trump to try to overturn the 2020 election and stay in office. Peter Navarro and Dan Scavino hold key elements to that possible charge from the Department of Justice, should it ever come. Navarro was part of the planning of what's called the Green Bay Sweep, which is pushing uh, the election back to the state, so alternate electors are then sent back to Congress. Dan Scavino was Trump's closest aide inside of the White House, helping him make phone calls during different periods. Uh, Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin, who is on the January 6th uh, House Committee, uh, Robert, as you know, appeared on Face the Nation yesterday. He discussed the committee's investigation into former President Trump's White House phone logs and the gaps uncovered. I want to play a bit of what he told Margaret Brennan for our audience, and we'll discuss. The former president's office was known for being sloppy. Um, he used cell phones. She wasn't, the personal assistant wasn't in the office that day. Is there a chance here that this was just sort of large scale incompetence rather than conspiracy? Well, we're taking that possibility into account. Um, it does seem like the, the gaps are suspiciously tailored to uh, the heart of the events, um, but we're checking that out. and. You know, our mandate under H.R. 503 is to get a complete picture of everything that took place on January 6th, the causes leading up to it, and then what we need to do as a country to fortify democratic institutions and processes against future insurrections and coups and attempts to destabilize and overthrow our elections. So, Bob, you heard uh, what Congressman Raskin said. Uh, coincidence or not? That is the question, I guess. Um, what else are you learning about uh, with regards to that day and from what Congressman Raskin had to say? Vlad, it's still an open question in terms of intent uh, by former President Trump when it comes to the record keeping. Uh, but as reporters, uh, what we're trying to do is figure out just where do the gaps exist? And long story short, 11 pages of presidential records from January 6 were handed over under a Supreme Court order from the National Archives to the House Committee. These 11 pages were published by CBS News and The Washington Post, and they include a seven-hour gap in terms of long, logged phone calls during that day. Of course, it's evident to the committee and to us that other calls were made by Trump and his allies during that period, and they're hoping to piece together the full picture of January 6th and Trump's phone calls from other data. But the, at least the official records don't seem to have uh, a complete picture. Now, to Margaret's point, incompetence versus the intent to uh, obscure records, uh, that will be something the committee has to look into. Uh, but 
Trump often used cell phones uh, when he was in the Oval Office during those types of periods. He sometimes used the landlines within the dining room of the White House and in, in the Oval Office. The question is, if if those weren't part of the official records, well, where are the records then for those calls, which we know exist? Are they on some kind of other agency that monitors those calls, uh, logs? Are they part of another batch of notes that, for some reason, wasn't given over to the National Archives? These are open questions that could be answered by more investigation and more reporting. But for now, the committee has what it has, those 11 pages plus whatever they've compiled so far. Yeah, those are really interesting questions, because in my mind, I was thinking, well, you know, no one took down this data, but maybe they did. Maybe they did, and they failed to hand it over by mistake, or maybe not, right? Uh, Robert, thank you very much. Thank you.